The brain is incredible. It consists of a huge network of cells called neurons, and allows us to perceive the world, recognize patterns of events, form memories, make decisions, and take actions. From this marvelous example of intelligence that nature gives us, scientists and engineers strive to learn how to recreate brain-like behaviors in artificial systems. Artificial intelligence created with electronic circuits has been used to control smart robots and devices that can interact with us and serve our needs. But at a much smaller scale, such as within individual cells inside our bodies, we also have needs that require intelligent systems to directly interact with molecules. For example. If a smart system inside a cell can collect information from various molecules, it will be able to diagnose a disease based on the knowledge we programmed into it. However, recreating brain-like behaviors at the molecular scale remains difficult. To approach this challenge, we look back to biology for inspiration. Before the neuron-based brain evolved, bacteria and other single-celled organisms also showed some limited form of intelligence. Such as searching for food and avoiding toxins, these behaviors arise from molecular interactions inside individual cells. Thus, molecules can act as biochemical circuits that process information and perform computational tasks. So, it is natural to ask: Can we make a biochemical circuit from interacting molecules that act like a network of neurons and exhibit brain-like behaviors? The answer is yes. And all it takes is a few small DNA molecules. In the brain, each neuron has an electrical potential. It fires or remains silent based on whether the electrical potential is above or below a threshold. When a pulse signal arrives at a synapse from another neuron, it either raises or lowers the electrical potential. When the threshold is exceeded, a pulse is generated and sent down the axon to other neurons. Although each neuron performs a relatively simple computational task, the collective behavior of a neural network is much more complicated and quite powerful. Mathematical models have been developed to describe the abstract functions of biological neurons. One of the simplest is known as the linear threshold function. The model neuron receives a number of inputs, each having a weight, and the output is associated with the threshold. It calculates the weighted sum of all inputs. And compares the sum with the threshold. Initially, all inputs are zero, thus the output is zero, indicating the neuron is silent. When the first input becomes one, because it has a positive weight, the sum is increased. When the second input becomes one, because it has a negative weight, the sum is decreased. When the third input becomes one, the sum exceeds the threshold, and the output becomes one, indicating the neuron has fired. In an artificial neural network, each neuron has a number of inputs, each with an arbitrary weight, and an output with an arbitrary threshold. To implement such an artificial neuron, the computing substrate is required to add, to apply a weight, and to have a threshold. To implement a neural network, the output of each neuron should be capable of serving as inputs to other neurons. Connected together as a network. Artificial neurons are capable of brain-like behaviors, such as forming memories and recalling a specific memory when presented with partial information. In a model network called a Hopfield associative memory, each neuron collects information from every other neuron to determine its own firing activity. For example, our brains are good at recalling memories based on incomplete visual patterns. A Hopfield network with nine artificial neurons can recognize visual patterns with nine pixels. Each neuron is responsible for one pixel, determining whether it should be light or dark. Suppose the network has been trained to memorize a few letters, including L and T. Then, if some pixels are missing, the neurons that are responsible for these pixels will try to restore the missing information and complete the pattern. For example, if the bottom left pixel is missing, neuron seven will take information from the other eight neurons, calculate the linear threshold function. And in this case, decide that its own state should be dark. In a different case, when the middle pixel is missing, 
Neuron 5 will survey its neighbors and decide that its own state should be dark. Usually, a half view network can recall a memory even if many pixels of the pattern are missing. Now, recreating this brain-like behavior within biochemical systems requires finding a substrate that is capable of calculating the linear threshold function for a single neuron and connecting neurons together in a desired way. This is where DNA comes in. A single strand of DNA is like a necklace with four types of beads A, T, C, and G. It has an orientation marked with an arrow hat. The strand shown here uses only three letters, which discourages it from folding onto itself. Two single strands can come together to form a double-stranded molecule if their sequences match, meaning A pairs with T and C pairs with G. Here, these two strands are partially paired, leaving the unpaired parts sticking out like tails. In this example, the single strand can stick to the short tail and zip it itself up to the complementary strand while displacing the other strand. The strand displacement process can be seen as an input strand releasing an output strand. This works because they share the same sequence within the right part of the input strand and the left part of the output strand. Naturally, this input strand is not the only molecule that can produce the output strand. An input strand with a different sequence on the left and the same sequence on the right can also trigger the release of the output strand. But an input strand with the same sequence on the left and a different sequence on the right will not produce the output. Because the interactions between DNA molecules are determined by their sequences, and one can encode arbitrary sequences in synthetic DNA molecules, these interactions can be programmed to perform the required functions for artificial neurons. To add 1 and 1, we start with one copy of input strand 1 and one copy of input strand 2. Input strand 1 releases one copy of the output strand, and input strand 2 releases another copy of the output strand, which indicates that 1 plus 1 equals to 2. Generally, to add x and y, one can start with x copies of input strand 1 and y copies of input strand 2. As long as there are more than x plus y copies of the initial double-stranded molecules, the number of output strands produced will be the sum of x and y. To apply a weight of 2, we start with one copy of the input strand and some extra strands called fuel. The input strand first produces one copy of the output strand, then a fuel strand replaces the input strand in a symmetric reaction. Now the input strand can trigger the release of another output strand and become available again with the help of another fuel strand. At this point, there are no double-stranded molecules containing the output strand anymore, so no more output strands can be produced, which indicates that a weight of 2 has been applied to the input. Generally, to apply a weight x, one can start with x copies of the double-stranded molecule and more than x copies of the fuel strand. As long as the input strand exists, it will produce x copies of the output strand, implementing the applied weight x. To have a threshold of 2, meaning to distinguish a signal above 2, we start with two copies of a threshold molecule. If there is one copy of the input strand, it will stick to the long tail of the threshold molecule, and a faster strand displacement process will take place, with only waste products being produced. Because no more input strand exists, the threshold has not been exceeded. If there are three copies of the input strand, one input strand will be absorbed by a threshold molecule, another input strand will be absorbed by another threshold molecule, but there is still one more input strand left. The threshold has been exceeded. Generally, to have a threshold y, one can start with y copies of the threshold molecule, and if there exists any input strand afterwards, it indicates that the input signal is above the threshold. Otherwise, there will only be threshold left over. Now, it seems like DNA can serve as a computing substrate to add, to apply a weight, and to have a threshold. If these molecular implementations can be put together to act as an artificial neuron, and if a few of these neurons can be put together to form a memory that recognizes patterns of a DNA strand, 
then we could make a tiny DNA brain. Designing such a DNA brain is easier with the help of a node wire abstraction. Every number above a wire indicates a single strand, with its amount relative to a standard concentration. Every number inside a node indicates a double-stranded molecule, with negative numbers indicating a threshold. To implement an artificial neuron, each input has a weight applied to it. All weighted inputs are added together. If the sum exceeds a threshold, the output will be 1, otherwise it will remain 0. The nodes and wires are systematically translated into DNA molecules. A half-field associative memory with four artificial neurons fully connected together can be implemented with 112 different DNA strands. Before the amount of each molecule is determined, the network has an empty memory. It is capable of remembering various 4-bit patterns, but it hasn't been trained yet. Let's teach this 4-neuron DNA brain to remember 4 scientists. Each is identified with a pattern of answers to 4 yes or no questions, such as was the scientist a British or was the scientist a mathematician? To implant these memories into the DNA brain, we use a learning algorithm on a computer to determine the weights and thresholds of every neuron, which in turn determines the amount of every molecule. 